a world unto itself, like the planet or the largest island. Attached to Africa 165 million years ago, this great land broke away and turned, creating a stunning diversity of plants and animal species found nowhere else evolved. Welcome to Madagascar. We join a Dr. Russell Mitermeyer, the world's leading expert in lemurs, and Sir Richard Branson, the British business titan behind the Virgin Group. Madagascar is one of the most unique places on our planet. In many ways, it's the highest priority biodiversity conservation hotspot on Earth. And it's really unique in so many ways, especially in an evolutionary sense. It's the fourth largest island in the world, but it's the largest continental island. That means it's an island that's been isolated from other land masses for a very long time. It's been separated from Africa for 160 million years. It's been separated from India for 90 million years. And so evolution has proceeded on its own course here in Madagascar. And virtually everything that you have here, 90, 95, 100% of the different groups of animals are endemic. They're found here and nowhere else on Earth. Plants. 15, 16,000 species of plants, 80% of them endemic. The reptiles, almost 400 species of reptiles, 95% found only here and nowhere else. But the real group that has attracted attention here and has brought the world to come to Madagascar and to appreciate all of its beauties are the lemurs. This is a group of non-human primates, 102 species and counting because we're still describing new ones, 102 species of lemurs found nowhere else on Earth. This is an amazing uh, radiation of non-human primates, and most of them now are endangered with extinction. Russ is perhaps the, the number one expert in lemurs, and he was good enough to invite us to Madagascar to open our eyes, and, um, and have just spent eight fascinating days traveling around Madagascar. Some beautiful happy moments with the, the dancing, Shabaka's beautiful rainforest, um, beautiful places on, on, on the sea, and some, uh, maybe more, incredibly sad moments where you see the complete desolation of Madagascar from slashing and burning and species that are, you know, on the verge of disappearing. I'm in a position where I, I may be able to influence in a small way that, that, um, some of the magnificent species that are uh, you know, disappearing. And I think if you're in, in a position to do something about it, you've, you've got to do something about it. And uh, lemurs, uh, you know, um, sadly, you know, I mean, there used to be 150, 160 species, now only 102 species left in the world and uh, in, in peril. The major threats to, uh, to lemurs and their habitats are destruction of the natural forest environments. They're all forest species, and if you cut down their natural forests for cattle pasture, for slash and burn agriculture, for logging, they have no place to survive. On top of that, even if you have some forests that are still intact, there is hunting pressure, and this hunting pressure seems to be increasing. Traditionally, there were fadis, there were taboos against hunting certain species of lemurs, but now with the movement of lots of human populations within Madagascar, a lot of migration internally within the country, a lot of these traditions are breaking down and you see lemur species that were previously protected by taboos now being hunted. And these animals simply cannot support hunting pressure. It's almost too late, um, but I think um, if, if um, 
the world community moves quickly and as the people here in Madagascar move quickly, um, it, it, there's every chance that uh, the problems here can be reversed. Well, there are so many species now that are in the critically endangered category. That means they may, may be down to a few dozen, a few hundred, a few thousand individuals, and the trends are downward. If we don't do something very quickly about these critically endangered species, they will be gone in 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 years. So we really need a global, a concerted global effort to focus attention on those remaining natural areas, those unique species that exist only here, and really work with the Malagasy government and especially the local communities in Madagascar, who ultimately are our most important partners in this effort, to provide them with the resources, with the training, with the capacity to ensure that these wonderful creatures and the habitats they occur in persist into the future so that our future generations of Malagasy and all of us can really appreciate how wonderful they are. <laughs> what can one say? It's just spectacular. I mean, this is one of the great sounds, not just of the Malagasy forest, but one of the one of the greatest sounds anywhere in the rainforest, anywhere in the world. And this is this animal, the Indri, is just spectacular. It's the largest of the living lemurs. They get up to about nine kilograms maximum size, and I just love them. They're up there in my favorite two or three animals in the world. All of us need to take responsibility. I think because Madagascar is such a poor country, uh, we in the, in the developed world, who are interested in biodiversity, who are interested in maintaining the full range of life on Earth, we need to help. And we need to help in a, in a major way because Madagascar is simply not going to be able to do it on its own. You need government level support in Madagascar. Unfortunately, right now, the government is very weak. We can't count on them to do too much. The real action now is with local communities. People like the community here in uh, Andasi Bay where you have three guide associations who are totally committed to saving these animals, not only in the government reserves that exist, but also they're so excited about this and they see this as a livelihood opportunity, an economic opportunity for them, that they are now uh, creating their own community reserves. There are several community reserves immediately adjacent to the government protected areas. There are other reserves that are being created in other parts of this region. And you can do this for pennies. You can do this for a few thousand dollars a year. And these people are so enthusiastic and so committed. The future of lemurs, the future of the forests of Madagascar really depend on these communities. Yeah, well, obviously, I've had the privilege of spending time with uh, two or three of them this, this trip, and um, they're absolutely magnificent and uh, so knowledgeable. And, um, and they, I think they would 
put their own lives before uh, losing a lemur. There are many different ways to approach the conservation problem here. First and foremost, we have to concentrate on the remaining natural ecosystems to make sure that we protect remnant populations of all of these 102 species of lemurs in nature. But in addition to that, we have to look at the establishment of safety colonies, colonies of lemurs in other parts of the world, which serve multiple purposes. First of all, they serve as ambassadors to show the world how wonderful these animals are because not everyone can come to Madagascar. And also to make sure that if for some reason key species disappear in their natural habitat, we have individuals of that species in other settings in other parts of the world that can later be reintroduced. So the work that's being done on Necker Island, Mosquito Island, to conserve some of the most endangered lemur species serves as a critical safety valve, a protective measure uh, in case some of these species uh, go extinct in the wild. One film that opened my eyes was Shark Water and um, Rob Stewart who directed that um, film was on Necker Island and, um, and he saw um, Mosquito Island and he saw Necker and He'd spent time in Madagascar and just thought, you know, these, these look like, you know, mini Madagascars. Um, and um, asked if I could consider putting the islands aside to take some of the um, rarest species that were in zoos, um, that were in real um, peril, you know, out in the wild back in Madagascar, and set up a breeding program on the islands. And, um, and you know, we, we, you know we, we've been delighted to do so. And, um, and have started that process. Mosquito and Necker Islands really have great advantages over zoos because they are, in many ways, like natural habitat. The habitat on those islands is very similar to certain parts of, uh, of Madagascar in terms of the, the climate regime and the vegetation structure. And if you have animals living in a natural forest setting as opposed to a cage, they're going to be much more uh, pre-adapted to going back into nature. And the idea of first bringing lemurs to Mosquito and Necker came up. A lot of Caribbean conservationists became very concerned at the risk of introducing a new and invasive species onto the Caribbean islands. And the Caribbean has a long history of invasive species that have had incredibly bad impacts. For instance, there are monkey species that are uh, introduced on uh, various islands, uh, Grenada, Barbados, uh, several others, St. Kitts and, and Nevis. You have the mongoose, which is the worst example of all, and those animals have really wreaked havoc on the islands to which they were introduced, and they did not function in the way that they were supposed to function. They did not uh, take care of the pest species that they were brought in to, to take care of. Rather, they became major pests themselves. But the concern about levers, I think, is unfounded. First of all, the animals that are being uh, uh, placed on mosquito and neck are put in very large enclosures, but they're restricted enclosures. The animals don't have free reign to the entire island. And lemurs are not the kind of animals that become invasive species. They're easy to recapture if they escape. They're relatively mild-mannered creatures, and the vast majority of them don't eat uh, other animals. The kind of animals that have been and are going to be introduced onto Necker and Mosquito are mostly uh, folivores, leaf eaters, and uh, frugivores, fruit eaters. They're not particularly interested in uh, small vertebrates, which would be the species that would be at greatest risk from, for example, if you brought in monkey species to uh, an island like uh, Necker. The people of Madagascar are wonderful. They're a very gentle, uh, non-violent people, and uh, they're really very connected to their environment. And I think that it really, unfortunately, they've had a They've had a hard time over the past few decades in terms of the political situation here, and many of them now are really below the poverty level. So if we can combine 
conservation efforts, with efforts to improve the well-being of these human populations. Maybe we can't do it for the entire island, but if we can do it in select places, work with these communities and get them committed to protecting their natural environment and at the same time improving their quality of life, I think we'll be making a great contribution, not just ecologically, not just terms in, in terms of conservation, but also in terms of improving the quality of life of people. Yeah, so the people of Madagascar must realize that um, they've got a completely unique species here and um, they really must recognize that, they must value it uh, and it will come back and um, give them great blessings in the future. Thank you.